Hello and welcome to the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. We are excited that this beautiful space in your place on the downtown mall is finally here. We're excited for the things that are going to come out of CCMC. I am here with Ryle Thomas. Well, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's well, glad to I be should here. say welcome back to me because you you continue to do programs. Well, uh, hopefully you will join us soon and um, yeah. do more programs yourself. Yeah. yeah. Raul and I, for those of you who've been watching um, our, our local access station for many years, we used to do, I used to work on his show, the Raul Thomas show, Voices. With Voices, that's Voices correct. Voices with Raul Thomas. And that was back when we were at uh, KTEC. Right. And so many years ago, I worked on that show for for a number of years and here we are back again for the first time after all those years because uh, we went from K-Tech to I think Forest Street I believe and then out of JP, JPA and now we're here. I mean it's a great thing here you know mm -hmm. you know where individuals can come down get their voice out get their message out you know I mean you know with the help of the city along with um, what you and I are doing and the rest of the producers here you know it's a great thing it's a mm -hmm. great thing for someone to start and have a foundation of experience in all of this. Yeah, yeah. So if you are just joining us, this is the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. We are down here at York Place, Suites 9 and 10 on the downtown mall. Come by, check out the space. We have a live audience here. We're thankful to, for those who have come out to um, be with us today. And let me just quickly share with you the mission before we bring up our, our first guest. CCMC's mission is to encourage and inspire community expression by offering resources to create and distribute media that celebrates art, education, achievement, cultural exchange, and social awareness. And along with Ryle, I too uh, was a producer for many years, I think like 10 or 12 years on um, producing several shows and working on other shows, like I said, with Ryle. So um, it's definitely a great resource if you have a lot to say and people have a lot to say about what's going on in Charlottesville, come on down here and put a show together. And um, so we'll talk a little more about those producing opportunities as well. Yes. But no, what I really want to say is uh, I like the way that you are um, talking right now. Oh, well, And good. see, this is proper backup. See, this is what I miss. I miss from oh. someone being able to back me up on some things because I could have never done this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, I was like, wow, well, so, you take the lead. He's like, nope, no, I'm not. Yeah, okay, yeah, you do so. this, so I'm glad to have you. Yeah, yeah, it, Dave, it's a blessing. Dave told, no, Dave, yeah, Dave said yesterday, y'all have the gift of gab. You got it. Oh, and God. I'm like, I think that's a compliment. So, yeah, we'll go with it. We All have right. the gift of gab. All we can right. handle it. All right. All right. We're ready for our, next, our first ready, guest? Ready, ready. Okay. I'm Andrea yeah. copeland Whitset. This is Ryle Thomas. Thank you for tuning in to the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. Our first guest we want to bring up is Mr. Brian Wheeler. He is the communications director for the city of Charlottesville, and Brian is going to tell us a little, little about how all of this came to be. Thank you, Brian. Hey, I'm going to turn. Brian's no stranger to the media. This is this is the world you kind of grew up in, right? Well, I, I was a journalist in town for 12 years, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a career change for me. But I was able to cover the city and the county and. Issues like land use, transportation, community mm. design. Yeah. So that was my beat for yeah. many years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you're on TV. Well, who would who would have thought? <laughs> that public access TV. Well, thank you for everything you did to help make this this possible. So I'm going to turn it over to you, so you can tell tell our community how this um came to be. We got to get you fixed up. Yeah. Okay. This is live TV, so thank you all for uh, your patience with us. All right. Testing. Okay, Dave. Yep. Yeah. Use that one. All right. All right. So All right. welcome, everyone. This is the Charlottesville Community Media Center, and uh, we're excited to have you be part of this. I know there are a lot of people in the audience who have been producers over the years, or who want to be producers in the future. Uh, so we're looking forward to having new content on public access parks. That's our communication staff for the city, but we have these resources available to us and to the community. So we want to make sure we're using them effectively. Um, one little story I can tell you about the, the set behind me. This was built in Charlotte, and we went down and uh, picked up the set and drove it back here to make sure it would be here in time uh, for our open house. But this is uh, an example of some of the state-of-the-art uh, uh, technology and equipment that we can make available to the community. It can be lit in any number of different ways and colors, and we can put different uh, set stage uh, equipment in front of this. 
So we look forward to seeing what the community is going to do with this space. Also want to make sure we thank uh, Comcast and its subscribers. Uh, Comcast uh, uh, subscriber fees are one of the ways we've funded this upgrade. And these upgrades have not been just in this studio, but also in City Hall and uh, in the council chambers. So if you've noticed an improvement in the quality of our uh, broadcast of government meetings, that's because we invested a lot of your funds in this equipment. So we want to thank Comcast and all its subscribers for supporting us. Now, how did we come to be here in York Place? That's a good story as well, and it involves uh, Ryle Thomas. And Ryle approached us and said he had an, an idea to take his show uh, to uh, a new state of excellence, and he wanted it to be in a state-of-the-art studio, and did we want to be part of that? And we said, yes, uh, we did want to be part of that. And so this work would not be possible without the underwriting of Ryle Thomas in helping support uh, the space that we have here today. So I want to make sure we thank him uh, for helping lead the way. So those are a few of my thank yous. I wanted to make sure we got those out there. Again, I look forward to seeing how city staff use this facility. You can imagine public service announcements, educational videos about different parts of city government and how we do the things that you know, the, a thousand, the thousand staff in the city of Charlottesville do every day uh, to make this community better. So I look forward to being able to showcase uh, their work. But I also look forward to the community coming to the table, whether they're students, uh, longtime members of the community, somebody who's just moved here who has a new idea. We want to see new content on our public access stations. We look forward to your creativity. And um, what I've found over the years in Charlottesville is that if you invite the community to the table, you ask them what their best ideas are, great things happen. And we saw that uh, this year with Unity Days. That was a great example of uh, uh, how we reached out to the community and asked them what they wanted to do when we marked the uh, second anniversary of August 2017. And we had a great uh, series of events. Over 80 events were held throughout the summer, and those were all community driven. So let's figure out how we can get that same sort of energy and drive that exists in the community and use it to educate folks, make this resource available to many more people, get them educated about state-of-the-art video technology, and let's see what you can produce for us. So thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, again, we are grateful to you thank for you for stepping up and approaching the city about that and for Brian and, and the city being a partner in making the Charlottesville Community Media Center uh, a reality. This is the CCMC Open House. We're down here from 10 to 12 at York Place and we invite you to come down and check out the space. And let me just uh, briefly share some of what, some of the offerings of, of CCMC. Um, there, there are annual memberships. Um, which are very affordable, reasonably priced, and membership access gets you a three-camera studio and equipment, uh, special training and workshops, online training library, members-only Facebook group, CCMC publications, invitation to CCMC events, and so much more. So go online and check out what's available, cvillemedia.org. All right, our next guest is Lily. How you pronounce her last name? Go right. Lily Gray, please come join us and enlighten us with your music. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, okay so we're, we're just going to talk with you for a little yeah. bit. All right, Raul has some questions for you. Well, uh, well how, how are you doing? I'm yeah, really, how are you? Uh, doing great. How long have you been playing? <laughs> I've been playing guitar since I was probably eight years old. All right. Yeah. And some of the songs that you'll be singing, are they originals or? Yeah. I'll be singing two songs this morning, and both of them will be originals. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Several years ago, Lily was on the show you performed yeah. at our open house when we were at Kate Tech, and yeah. that was like five, six years that ago. That was a while ago, yeah. So she's in her 20s now, mm. and <laughs> <laughs> touring around, singing her songs that she's written, and uh, just it's just been tremendous to see her growth. 
So where can people hear more of your, your music? Yeah. Mm. So my website is lilygaray.com. That's L-I-L-Y-G-A-R-A-Y.com. And on there, they'll be able to find all the links to the best streaming platforms. So if you use Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon, YouTube, all my music is on all those platforms. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we're going to move out yeah. of the way and let you do your thing. Awesome. All Thank right. you all right. so much. This first song that I have for you guys is called Lifted. And I wrote it back <clears throat> in October with one of my friends, uh, David DeFerez, Isabella Pierce, and Genesis Feliciano. Oh, what would we do with no limits? Who has life for the stars surround us? And I'm reaching for something, I can almost taste it. I'll see you in my haze I'm barely floating but I know you with me I'll see you in my haze as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting you've been here all along the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting, you've been here all along. Oh, you breathe into all of my dreams. And light floods the stars surround us, surround us. I'm reaching for something I can almost taste it I'll see you in my haze and I'm barely floating but I know you with me I'll see you in my haze as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting you've been here all along the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting, as the fog is lifting, you've been here all along. My eyes catch the golden light, drifting off into the night. My eyes catch the golden light, I'm drifting off into the the night as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting you've been here all along the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting as the fog is lifting you've been here all along thank you guys um this next song that i'm gonna sing is called wildfire and I wrote this one with my friend Joey Ramirez. Um, it's online as Wildfire with Of the Land and Lily Garay. Um, but it's a song that really means a lot to me because I was in school in Florida and I was freaking out. It's senior year and I had no idea what I was going to do next. Um, and I was really nervous that my friend had asked me to co-write with him because it was He's a really amazing songwriter, and I was just super anxious getting to the session. I'm like spilling my coffee. Um, and we ended up writing this incredible song that just ended up meaning so much. Like, if no matter whether you're graduating college or whatever your other step may be, um, a lot of things in life are unknown, and that's okay. But it doesn't mean it can't be beautiful. So, this is called Wildfire. Mm -hmm. Wild Step into the wild oh. Come open your eyes Though it may be unclear 
Thank you guys so much for having me. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Lily. Yeah, thank was, you, thank you, thank yeah, you. That was great. That was um, excellent. That's Lily Garay with Lily Garay Music. You can find it online. She's on all the social media platforms, YouTube account. Yep, and you too. Thank you again. And did we did we say anything? Does she have any CDs out? Do you CDs. have any CD? I mean, D DVDs out. DVDs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> upside. <laughs> you know how we old right school. Here. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. What did you say? The album is called "It's All Beautiful Right Here." It's all it's beautiful. It's all beautiful right here. That is all awesome. Right. So we are down here at York Place on the downtown mall, and for those of you who are wondering where exactly is this place, we're going to give you a tour right now. Okay, we are located at the shops at your place, the beautiful shops at your place. Um, you can, this is the interest coming from the downtown mall. As you can see, the different shops are, are, are to the right and the left as we go down the hall. And look at that lovely facade of Whoa. the Charlottesville Community Media Center. Tell you, it's just exciting to see it get to this uh, get to this location, and now we are. This is our entrance from Water Street, so there is a dual entrance to get to CCMC. Um, yeah, these are the shops again coming up from the Water Street side, Whoa. and there's parking in the Water Street garage, parking in the Market Street garage. This is an opportunity for you, the community, to come make your voice heard. Again, we cover. Things like art, education, achievement, cultural exchange, social awareness. This is your community right. station. Right. So come on down, get signed up to become a member, take the producer's class, and just, you know, use this as a platform to make your voice heard and to make our community, Charlottesville community, a better community. That's because right. we, we definitely need that positivity and that, that uplifting. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, see, there's so many people that have a lot to say. And sometimes, you know, a lot of people feel that they may not have an outlet, you mm -hmm. know, but this can be an outlet, you know, for people to come down that may be a little yeah. shammer cat, don't want to speak too much, you know, with, with being mm -hmm. pressured. So they can just come yeah. down and just speak freely yeah. about, you know, a show they have, you know, in mind or just speak freely about some concerns they may have about the community. Right. So that's um, basically what we're trying okay. to do here. All right. Okay. So we're going to uh, bring up our next guest. You want to do it? No. <laughs> I can't pronounce okay. that. I can't pronounce that. We're going to bring up Dr. Daria Brzezinski uh, with What Wise Women Want. She highlights women in the community 
And hey, Daria, how, how are, are you? Yes. You want to hold on to your jacket? I had no idea I was going to be here today. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, how did you hear about it? I received an microphone. email. Okay, uh, let, let us get your microphone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. So, how did you hear about the uh, open house today? So, I was a former producer uh, for What Wise Women Want, mm -hmm. and uh, with the transition, we were kind of. Uh, took a little time off yeah. and so um, I decided to come down here and see what was going on to uh, find out and this is an incredible studio it's mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic it mm -hmm. state-of-the-art mm -hmm. it's absolutely yeah. beautiful so um, we would like to uh, start uh, creating a program again yeah. with highlighting women in the community and mm. on topics that uh, are not just beneficial and interesting for women, but hopefully everyone as well, from you know health to education to raising children to being a single mother to uh, whatever topics interest women, and bring in um, local women in the community to talk about uh, whatever their expertise is or and, issues. And how long did you produce your your program, Kali? I think it was four years. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So it was wonderful, uh, you know, meeting many of the women in the community as well, mm -hmm. and highlighting many of the things I didn't even know existed in this community. Yeah. So um, that's the nice part about working in the community, mm -hmm. um, and doing a program that highlights the women because you get to meet an awful lot of wonderful women. Yeah. All right. So you say you plan to get involved again, which is great, and. Mm -hmm. um, kind of thinking about doing some of the same programming or changing it up a little bit? Uh, probably same kind of programming. I think it's really interesting to have a group of women, about four or five women sitting around the table and having a discussion. Rather than highlighting myself, I'd rather highlight, mm. you know, the whole purpose is to highlight the women in the community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I would much prefer having uh, the women be I prepare for every show that I do, have yeah. about 20 questions. I send it out to all the women so that they can prepare ahead of time and then um, see yeah. what happens after that. Right, right. Then it gets okay. to be a wonderful discussion, like we're sitting around having coffee at the kitchen table. Yeah, yeah, I think Rob has some questions well, for not, you. Well, um, do you ever have men come in along with the women or is it just a women, women's event? I think, you know, many, I would agree that um, many people in the community would say that there aren't many things here where we highlight women mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of things with men, but we don't do a whole lot of things with women. So mm -hmm. the answer is no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I belong to, a, a, let's say, a college organization, and uh, just as an example, and it, it was an all-female organization, and we had a man come in one day to speak, and it completely changed the dynamics of the conversation. So I learned from that experience that, you know, and I also went to an all-female college and, you know, we had men come in now and again and I noticed how women behave differently around um, men. So mm -hmm. I think we are much more open and communicative about our deepest issues when it's women in general. And I don't think that's a bad thing. No, 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 it's your thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it can't be a bad thing. It's not so yeah. much about excluding men, it's just this thing you've created for Women, women, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and supporting them and, you know, also giving them the opportunity to be able to speak on camera. When you have a group of mm -hmm. women as opposed to one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. or, you know, being alone on camera can often be intimidating. Mm -hmm. But if you have a group of women sitting around a table, you know, and kind of sometimes we go out beforehand and have a few drinks to relax everybody, right, 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 you right. know, <laughs> then they have a really good time on the set and don't mm -hmm. even think about the cameras in the room. Okay. So where can, uh, where can the community find more information about what wise women want? There's a website, What Wise Women Want. It's okay. uh, www, and wise is spelled with a Z. So it's whatwisewomenwant.com. Okay, whatwise, W-I-Z-E, womenwant.com. And you are highlighting community women in this community, Charlottesville. Do yes, you bring any from Charlottesville the and surrounding, the surrounding areas. Surrounding areas. And you will see mm -hmm. in that on that website all of the programs that we uh, previously, um, all the women who have been on the programs that we previously aired. And there's also a YouTube channel with all those shows. Okay. That's awesome. All right. That's nice. Well, thank you, Daria. You're welcome. Dr. Thank Brzezinski. you for having me. We appreciate me. you being on. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. It was a pleasure. You. Likewise. All right, so she brought up some, some good points about, well, she mentioned how she produces, how she prepares for the show, mm -hmm. and that's part of the pr producing. 
So it's more than just showing up, boom, being on camera. There's there's some work that goes on in, in the background and behind the scenes that may be a week or two in advance. So right. how do you prepare for your, for your program, Voices oh, with Raul Thomas? No, the Raul Thomas show. That's the old show, Voices with Raul Thomas. Oh, it's the Raul Thomas, Thomas show, show now. Yeah, so yeah. it is the Raul Thomas show now. You yeah. did change the name. Right, oh, right, why? right. Why? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and Time for a change. <laughs> I just changed it. <laughs> we all have a right to change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just changed the name of the show. Um, I, you know, Voices, we, you know, that was what, what maybe 10 or 15 yeah, years. Yeah, a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just changed it. It was a okay. new scene, new setting, so mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. And so how do you prepare for that show? Uh, Dr. Brzezinski was speaking about how, yeah, there is preparation that goes into putting on these programs. So yeah. how do you prepare? Well, Mainly, I just, I kind of self-prepare, you know, because my show is more about inner self. You know, um, I invite, you know, guests to come on the show and to talk mm -hmm. about certain things, but my show actually is about just mental preparation, you know, like as I walk through the day, you know, and through the weeks, you know, certain things come to me about um, what a feeling is. Like the next show, we'll be talking about the treasures that lie with inside of you, okay. you know, and the, um, that's going to be an awesome show because I feel that so many of us have so many treasures that's inside of us that um, we never really take advantage of. You know, mm -hmm. we're so busy worrying about trying to please the next person, trying to meet this schedule, meet this, and do that for someone else, and never look at the fact of what you have to do for yourself okay. to enjoy life, you know. So, you know, we have to take time out and just dig deep, you know. Sometimes these yeah. feelings that we have, you know, we, we bring them on ourselves yeah. based on what we get involved in throughout the day, throughout the week and we never take time to realize that it's more to us and for us if we just focus on us and let our love shine on someone else. But first, we have to get in tune with ourselves. Okay. That's it. All right. I am Andrea copeland Whitsett, and I'm here with Ryle Thomas. You are watching the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. We are located here on the downtown mall inside of the beautiful York Place. Come on down and check us out. And we are streaming live and, and we're doing, uh, we have so many opportunities for you to watch it. But before we'll bring up our next guest, but before we do, we're gonna take a little break. Public access stations and community media centers are significant because they provide the communities they serve with a local point of view as an alternative to mainstream broadcasting. We are overloaded with media on a daily basis from radio, print, TV, and social media. And sometimes that community voice gets drowned out. And as a municipality, we feel it's important to provide our community with the resources and tools necessary to create and distribute community programming that celebrates us. Unfortunately, public access stations are disappearing from the municipal landscape. And it's a shame for any community to lose their voice. We want to preserve the Charlottesville voice. And we created a media learning center around our CPA TV model to help empower and educate the community. So if you want to tap into your community voice, the Charlottesville Community Media Center is the place to do it. We'll teach you how to go from concept to completion. So stop by and visit us. We're located at the shops at York Place at 112 West Main Street, or connect with us online at cvillemedia.org or on Facebook at Seville Media. You can also give us a call at 434-977-0713. I am Andrea Copeland here with Ryle Thomas. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. This is our first live, uh, live recording at the brand new studio here at the Shops at York Place. So we thank you for tuning in. We want to thank our, our audience for coming out as well to be with us today at our open house. So we have our next guest. John Hall, please come up and enlighten us on what you feel that needs to be said. <laughs> Hi, John. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good, good. Okay, so um, you are an independent candidate running for city council, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, all right. And um, tell us a little bit about your platform. Well, one of the main things I'm interested in is uh, continuing the uh, Charlottesville area transit on out to the airport. Now, whenever you want to affect change, you, you have to uh, go about it in a very delicate way and 
the way you interact with uh, city staff and uh, the city council, the city manager. You gotta make sure that uh, your ideas are well thought out, first of all, and that you follow protocol in order to introduce them the right way. You know, you have to uh, think through just how to get about uh, making things happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, um, let me read that note real mm -hmm. quick. Ryle, and it says here, um, you are promoting use by police smart cell phones to record all aspects of a crime at the crime scene to promote justice reform. Why is that important to you? Well, I think uh, it's important to get both sides of the story. And uh, with pretrial services and things, you need to uh, have an accurate brief that's made up especially when things are gonna to proceed to court. You need to get both sides of the story and a brief needs to be made uh, that reflects the honesty and the truth of both sides mm -hmm. so that uh, you can streamline the action and really come about to justice reform. I think there's too many cases on the dockets. The judges really don't know what happened the lawyers that are involved don't know what happened. And people are not prepared. You know, just not prepared for the case. And I think the smartphone tr technology that we have at our fingertips, at the time a policeman is uh, called to a crime scene or has to intercede when there's a domestic res dispute or something, would be ideal for when people are calm, having uh, justice reform by having these accurate briefs that would uh, result when mm -hmm. something goes to court okay. to arrive at what a truthful verdict and justice would come about. Okay, all right. All right. All right, so um, this is your third time running, second? Second. Second, okay. So um, as a citizen, we appreciate that you're like, if I, if I want to see change, I want to run for office. I may or may not win, but I'll try. Um, do you have any plans to possibly use this new facility down here to make your voice heard? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I would uh, like to work with the staff here to orchestrate it in the best uh, possible fashion so that uh, the object of uh, a program could come about and be portrayed in a very effective manner mm -hmm. so that people could uh, use their imagination and say, hey, this is really a good idea. We need to get this accomplished. Okay. And lastly, you have a concern about uh, needs for people living in substandard housing where mold is a problem. So you want to get on city council to change that? Yes, um, mm -hmm. my idea is to purchase uh, dehumidifiers and where air conditioning is not working, oscillating fans, it would be a cost effective uh, method to bring about a remedy for mm -hmm. problems that are uh, faced by tenants. Okay. All right, John, we thank you. Rob, did you have any questions for, for Mr. Hall? I know. I think he's answered them all. I think okay. he's done great. Well, thank you. Thank you for being down here at the Charlottesville Open at, um, yeah, Charlottesville Media Center Open House. Well, I yeah. appreciate being here. I almost said <laughs> Charlottesville Public Access because I'm so used to saying CBA yeah, TV. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. You found out who our next guest is? Our next guest is, Sunday excuse me, this yeah. is Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'll give it to you. You do the honors. All right. Our next guest is Bishop Hayton, pastor and founder of the Holy Church of Christ, Bumpus, Virginia. Okay. Please. Come on up. Welcome. 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 All right. Yes. It's good to be here. All right. Well, welcome and, to our uh, open house. Oh, bring it up the whole, yeah, yeah. bring up the whole yeah, crew. Yeah, bring them up. All right, hello. Joyce and you? my daughter, Jennifer. 
All right. And we are at the Holy Church of Christ in Bumpus, Virginia. We opened about a year ago, and uh, our mission is to spread the gospel, to let people know that Jesus Christ is the answer and that he can deliver and save. And, and we are really blessed to have this facility because mm -hmm. in our, we can deliver the message in our church, but this gives us an opportunity to bring it out from the church into other communities. And okay. uh, it gives us an uh, opportunity to provide hope, and hope is very important. <laughs> I remember as a young boy um, in Gooston, um, I said one day when I was in class, there was a career day. I said, I would like to, the man asked, what would you like to do? And I said, I would like to be a doctor. And he said, forget about it. Mm. It's not, it's not going to happen. You just can't do that. And uh, through uh, Christ and through what he extended to me, I became that physician. And mm. uh, as I look back over it, I know who brought me. Mm. And I want to give uh, that message that Christ is the answer and the opportunity. Everything that the world provides for you is not as good as what God provides for you. He gives it to you. He shines on you. And he doesn't add any sorrow with it. And mm. he's always available. Okay. And so I, I want to uh, extend to you Christ and his message and his hope and he's the healer he's the deliverer he's the he's the life giver and so um, we thank you all I, I, I think I want to say this one thing back some time ago um, we were with Mr. Tate over on the and he used to be over Ryle on Road. Ryle Road yeah. and I, we were on there for a while and then I lost contact with him I tried to find the station and I, I, I couldn't for it was two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then one day, wow. one day it just happened. Yeah. I, I got back in contact. Okay. So, um, you have any we questions, th Robert? We thank God for your. Uh, no, I'm just inspired by um, the message that you just delivered. Yes, you sir. know, sometimes um, when people tell us that we cannot do anything, yeah. it's, it, it also pushes us and encourages us yes. to do what people say that we can't do. And to hear you say that just confirms my belief. Yeah, it really does because I, it's interesting. I was sitting in the office in, in, and I practiced in the community where I was brought up. And there was a man there, an older man, and he said, I know your family. And he said, I know your mama, I know your daddy. I never would have thought you would have been, uh, you would have come to be a physician. And I've served as his physician from time to time. And so you never can put down what God will bring up. God will bring things that look like that they are not anything. I was a, I was a, a, a farm boy, and mm. I went to Hampton University, and uh, I remember just being the way that I was a farm boy. I didn't really talk like they talked, and I didn't eat like they ate. You know, I was a country guy. I just <laughs> did it the way that it came. And so I had to learn how to fit in with that and yet still keep what I had. Okay. And I like right. what I have. I like what God has given me. So, All right. So you. we're going to slide your wife over because she's going to uh, sing two songs. Yes. Whoa. And um, are right, you singing with her? No, daughter says no. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, this is Joyce Hayden. Again, they are with your church's name? Holy Church of Christ. In Bumpus, Virginia. Bumpus, Virginia. Bump, that's Louisa, right? That's Louisa. Louisa County. All right. Yes. So we'll get out of your way and let you sing your songs. Okay. okay. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. And I've got to tell somebody what he's done for me. I get great joy when I think about 
what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. How he died on the cross on Calvary, that's what he's done for me. And he rose on that third day, that's what he's done for me. What he's done for me, what he's done for me. What he's done for me, what he's done for me. What he's done for me, what he's done for me. What he's done for me, what he's done for me. It's like fire, shut up in my bones. It's just like fire, shut up in my bones. It's just like fire, shut up in my bones. It is the Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. And it's shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, it is the Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, well I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy, 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 joy. What he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I get joy. I get great joy from the Lord. And you know, there is none like him. He is great. None like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search through all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search through all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. I searched high and low, couldn't find nobody. I searched far and wide, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, my Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, he is the name above all names. Yes, he is. And he's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing, how great is our God. Oh, he is the name above all names. Yes, he is. And he's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing, 
How great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. The Charlottesville Community Media Center is a veritable hub of digital video production, skills training, and workforce development all in one convenient location. Any member of the community can sign up for an annual membership and gain access to this wealth of resources. You know, multimedia production has grown so much over the past several decades, and the city's Office of Communications has had to evolve with the ever-changing landscape. That's why we offer state-of-the-art training in studio, field, and post-production, as well as self-guided courses on social media and emerging technologies. It's a real opportunity for citizens to get more engaged with the community and share their own personal story on topics that matter most. Then we deliver that story to the area on cable television and to a global audience on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. You know, the city of Charlottesville has needed a community media center for quite some time, and we're excited to offer these resources to every resident of the city and surrounding counties. Just stop by the Charlottesville Community Media Center we're located in the shops at York Place on the historic downtown mall. We're open every Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can come in, say hi to me, take a tour of the studio, and learn how we can help you share your message with the community and beyond. Visit us online at cvillemedia.org or give us a call at 977-0713. All right, we're going to be bringing up Rona Sayeta to perform and I'm going to let you introduce her and um, talk with her in regards to a few things. Come on. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Rona Sayetta. I sit on the board of directors of Corionova. Corionova is Charlottesville's only professional contemporary dance company. And we spelled Corionova, C-H-O-R-E-O, -E like choreography, N-O-V-A, Corionova. This dance company is under the direction of our choreographer and artistic director, Miss Davida Ray, who's sitting off stage over there. She founded the company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 2012. Corianova's repertoire includes pieces that tell psychological, social, and political stories. You can relate to our stories. Corianova's mission is to create works that empower individuals toward greater resilience. You can check us out on our website at www.corianova.org or on Facebook and Twitter under the name at Corionova Moves, M-O-V-E-S. Our newest piece of contemporary dance is called The Mind's Eye. Not E-Y-E, -E, but capital letter I. The Mind's Eye uses three dancers all together to personify the id, the ego, and the superego, respectively as they develop coping and defense mechanisms that shape individual behavior from birth all the way to adulthood. This dance is set to Mark Anthony Turnage's postmodern music, Drowned Out, and employs elements of contact improvisation, modern dance, jazz, mime, break dance, and even some natural movement. The excerpt you are about to see is called The Id, which is performed by Miss Luna Shen from Richmond. She will be up shortly. We depict for you the birth and infancy of the Id and its earliest development as the primal part of the human psyche. 
In classical Freudian theory, the id is the first psychological structure of a person to come into existence. It represents your unconscious needs and drives. The id cares only about itself and seeks only pleasure. It bothers to satisfy just the most basic human needs, eating, sleeping, and touching everything. It craves sensation and can't get enough. The id is unrestrained, free, living without limits or cares. This is who you once were. So without further ado, please meet the id. Luna?
Welcome back to the Charlottesville Community Media Center, our open house. We are here down at the shops at, at York Place, and we just saw a lovely dance by, tell me your name. Luna. Luna. All right. Uh, Luna, how long have you been dancing? Uh, I've been dancing since I was five, so 19 years. 19 years. Okay, you're 24? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's your heart, huh? All right. So, um, what do you get out of your dancing? What, what drew you to this form of art? Uh, I mean, I started with ballet and tap, so that really helped me with, um, I guess, my technique, so you sort of get, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, structure, I guess, and you mm -hmm. learn how to work hard, take advice from your teachers, and implement that. Um, so, yeah, when I was growing up, that's really useful. And then in college, I started doing more modern lyrical, so it's more um, free-flowing things. Mm -hmm. And I started choreogra chore choreographing, mm -hmm. choreographing myself. Yeah. So then that really helps me with, with creativity. And then uh, this is actually my first piece that's so conceptual, so I learned a lot there, too. Okay, all right. And is this your first time performing? Live on TV? Yeah. Okay. Well, you did a great job. Thank you. All right. So, Luna with Choreo Nova, mm -hmm. right? Okay. All right. And share that website with us one more time. Uh, that should be C H O R E O N O V A dot com or dot org. Choreo -o Nova dot org. Choreo Nova dot org. All right. Thank you, Luna, so much. Come on up, bro. Thank you. I know she's hot, so she wants to get out of that suit. <laughs> All right. There you go. I don't need this. Oh, yes. Your next guest. Yeah. All right, we're going to be bringing up Ms. Jim Bates. She will be speaking on behalf of Ebenezer Baptist Church. All right, how are you doing, Ms. Bates? Good, good. Good morning. Good morning. And so you're here to represent Ebenezer Baptist Church, or what's your message today? So yes, I'm here with uh, representing Ebenezer Baptist Church, and I just want to say that the partnership with CPA or Charlottesville Public Access TV has been great for us. Right. Um, Ebenezer has been in the Charlottesville community since 1827, so, uh, no, I'm sorry, 1892, 127 years. Wow. Uh, we've, Ebenezer means the stone of help, so we have been fortunate enough to help others uh, over the years, basically, by spreading the gospel, the word of God, and CPA TV has been a mechanism in order for us to do that. So we just want to say thank you for the partnership and allowing us to reach others who we uh, might not normally be able to reach in the community. Oh, that's great. That's great. And the pastor there, what's his or her name? Yes, so our pastor is Pastor Lehman D. Bates II, and mm -hmm. if you want to hear the unadulterated Word of God, please come and join us uh, for our church service every Sunday. For the, through the month of September, service will start at 10, and then after that, starting in October, service will start at 11 a.m. All right, and how long has he been the pastor? A uh, pastor has been there since, I believe, 2006, mm -hmm. yes. And do you see the congregation growing, or is it basically remaining the same? Well, yes, the congregation is growing. Um, the people that are there are people who, one, you have to make a choice to go to church. You're, right, Everyone right. Uh, needs that word, needs something uh, from God. And so, yes, the people there are desirous of that thing. Uh, from God. So yes, there is growth. Uh, the sound, uh, whenever there's life, there's sound and movement. And so we are making moves in the community. We're making a joyful noise, just trying to say, hey, we're here. We're here to help. Um, many times through our partnership with Charlottesville Public Access TV, uh, there are people in the community, in the jails, who have seen our broadcasts. Um, there are people that I see on the street or in the wow. workplace, whether it's through public service announcements that I've made with public act, uh, with the uh, group, that they've said, hey, I saw you on public access TV. I didn't realize you guys were having that event. So wow. it's just a great extension to be able to say, hey, we're here and we welcome you into our church home. All right. Now, I also want to take a little bit of time to ask a few more questions. And um, so what are you all doing to reach the youth? So we have an active youth, uh, a youth ministry at church. Um, in addition to that, we try to partner in the community. Um, so I actually work with the youth at our church. Um, so we do try to stay active, recognizing that 
we have a lot of senior members and mm -hmm. so we try to harness you know the things that we've learned over the years connecting our youth with some of our older members and it's really um, a joint effort uh, kids need guidance I, right. I, I believe that kids in this generation need more guidance than they ever have before um, a lot of youth these days they may not you know visit a church house so when there's an opportunity to maybe have a broadcast on tv and you have a, a youth who may be flipping through the channels and then they happen to see our youth choir singing you know on one sunday they're mm -hmm. like may think oh wow that's something that i can do so yes um, we are active we do have an active youth ministry um, Many of our youth have gone on, uh, you know, over the years have gone on to do great things in the community, Charlottesville and beyond. So mm -hmm. we're just grateful to God for the increase in what he's doing in our lives. All right. That's yes. beautiful. Anything else you want to add, you know, while you're up here to reach out to the community to say a few things? Um, again, we're just grateful for the opportunity to spread the word to mm -hmm. those in the community, those who watch our service um, every Sunday or as they're flipping through the channels. Again, we just hope that there's something that's said that will bring others closer to Christ. All right. There you have it. Okay. Ms. June Bates. Thank you. You're more than All welcome. Right. Thank you, June. And we're going to uh, break away to, to just honor one of our longtime producers, Hilda Ward. She, you remember Hilda? I remember yeah, Hilda. Yeah, long, long locks. Um, so she, she's, like, as I said, she was a producer at CPA TV for a very long time. She's now moved away to Connecticut. And believe me, if she were here in Charlottesville still, she would be here at the open house. So we're just going to show you a little bit of her work. This is Hilda Ward. And I am going to be reading some poetry. Uh, one of the poems that I love, and they seem to pour out of me, is my I am from poems. Um, so I'm going to read one right now. I am from ancestors who struggled to survive, and family that worked hard, and an extended family who reached out to take care of each other. I'm from hopscotch and kick the can to spin the bottle and secret loves. I'm from cheerleading and straight A's to scholarship to help go to nursing school. I'm from girl, that street will be there, and eat those mashed potatoes. I'm from where is Korea to sending friends off to that war. I'm from raising three children to moving into a home of our own. I'm from working, raising girls, and going to college to become a teacher and found it felt like home. I'm from retirement to go to Africa to dealing with life and death. I'm from living on Thomas Jefferson's grounds to a second retirement. I'm from love and contentment as an elder walking this earth. I'm from nursing and teaching to being a writer of words. And so I'm here feeling gratitude, the woman I have become and feel blessed to be here on this earth. That felt really good. And when I was reading it, I, I found myself thinking about when I was a, a kid doing hopscotch and playing kick the can <laughs> and uh, some of the lessons that I had to learn. Ah, I'm going to read, No one can wear a hat like a black woman. And as you can see behind me is a quilt that was made for me just so that I could read this poem. No one can wear a hat like a black woman. No one can wear a hat like a black woman as she prepares for church, finding her gloves and straightening her stockings, greasing the children's elbows and knees. The last thing she must do is place that hat on her head, tipped a bit to the side. As she pushes the children out the door, she takes that last look in the mirror. She may have made breakfast, started dinner, and pressed a few heads, but when she walks out that door, she has a walk that shows pride. With her gloves in her hand and her bag tucked under her arm, she walks tall as a beautiful queen. No one can wear a hat like a black woman. She may have been on her knees scrubbing floors and cooking in a white woman's kitchen. She may have scrubbed clothes on a washboard and set loaves of bread for the week. And she may have made a few sweet potato pies for church. But when she dons that Sunday hat, she walks with an elegance that is regal and her head is held high with that wide brim. So no one can wear a hat like a black woman because it covers hard work and a life of struggle.
but it adds a sense of pride that can't be removed. Today, she may not be greasing children's elbows and knees because they're grown and on their own. She may not have to press heads and fix dinner because she now lives alone. She may not be on her knees scrubbing floors because she's now a supervising scrub nurse. She may not be cooking in someone's kitchen because today she owns her own restaurant. <laughs> she does not scrub clothes anymore and set any bread because she now sets policies and laws. She may not make pies for church anymore because she's now the pastor. But she still wears that hat with pride. And no matter what she does in her life today, no one can wear a hat like a black woman. So think about her when she enters church. Look around and admire that woman in the hat. And know that's a special woman who needs recognition because she makes changes in the world each and every day. Thank you so much for watching me, and I really feel so blessed that I can share my poetry with you again. It's been wonderful. Uh, poetry really does share me, and I love the fact that I can share it with you. Thank you. Blessings. Yeah. <laughs> that is Miss Hilda Ward, who's now in uh, Connecticut. Again, she was a longtime producer for Charlottesville Public Access Television. Thank you for tuning in to our Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. We are located at the shops at York Place. Um, we just, we were grateful for our audience that's here. And for those of you who have tuned in, we've had some great, great guests on. And, um, you know, I'm Andrea Copeland Whitsett. I was a producer with CPA TV for many, many years, having produced Speaking with Andrea inside nonprofits, um, breaking the Chains with Pastor Bates and working with Raul on Voices with Raul Thomas, which is now the Raul Thomas Show and so many other productions. And Cal Tate and David, <laughs> David, who's behind the scenes. They're both both making all this happen. Yeah. David Dillahunt, Cal Tate and, and Joe Rice, the whole communications team have, have been wonderful in making um, all of this happen. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, my co-host who's going to introduce our next guest. All right, it gives me great pleasure, great pleasure to bring before us Robert Noel. I'm going to let him come on up and um, explain to us. He's God. All right. Yeah, pleased to meet you. Yeah, likewise, yeah. likewise. I um, want to go ahead and start off a little bit by talking about, um, you know, what actually, how long have you been with public access? Um, and just speak freely about whatever you feel you wish to speak about. All right. Um, let me first say, you know, I think I'm really pumped up about uh, Sister Hayden. Her songs, she songs still got me all pumped up here. But, you know, I think, <laughs> praise God, you know, uh, about 23 years ago, well, our New Covenant Pentecost Church been on for about 23 years. Mm -hmm. And when it was up on Main Street, old um, Comcast building up near the bus station, I, uh, my church, and I was only a missionary, and we used to go out to the nursing homes, and and we used to get some of the, you know, sick and shut in, and they, they didn't hear the word of God. All right. So we used to take the word of God out to them. And I kept, you know, sometime I would get the family permission and bring them to church. And I kept thinking, why can't the word of God come to them? All right. And so, lo and behold, God is awesome. He made a way. And one day someone came to me and said, go down to the public access, which is now in Charlottesville community. And we did just that. And so I found out the greatest thing is getting the word of God out to people in the surrounding areas. And as it grew on, it got bigger. And one of the greatest things that I ever found is getting God ministry out to people who sometimes can't or for any other reason can't get to the house of God. Right. You know, first thing we want to do is cr criticize them because they're not there. We don't know the reason why they're not. You know, but anyway, I found out as I went to uh, several different states, they began to see the ministry of Jesus Christ. Not just to help you and where we are going hereafter, but God word help us in everyday life as we All are right, today. Yeah. All right. All right. And you know, the Bible tells us something like this. If this gospel be hid, be hid from those that are lost. 
And we just didn't have no means of getting out. So we thank each and every one of you all for giving us that chance to get the word of God out through songs and and words and and deeds and it's it been a, it's been a marvelous trip. All right. And now I just want to let this young lady they say oh uh, she's gonna be like my co-host producer. And <laughs> I want her to say we're gonna introduce this evangelist Stephanie. All right. Hello all, my name is Evangelist Stephanie Jackson. I'm a member at New Covenant Pentecostal Church and I just want to say thank you all for the support um, yeah. that you all have provided and also to the, the TV broadcast as well because as Elder Robert said, not everyone attends church and we wanted to do something to make a mission, to make a change and let everyone know that Jesus saves and that salvation is free. And this world that we live in today, we all have cares that we face. And just to let you all know, 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your cares upon me, for I careth for you. Yeah. All right, all right, that's a blessing. Anything you wanna say? Yeah, look, all right, we have, to, we have to tune it, we have to tune out right now. So, all right, so um, there again, we have um, Robert Noel and um, with the Church of New Covenant. New Covenant. Pentecostal Church. Pentecostal Church. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Social media is changing the way we connect with and engage with each other. As CCMC, members will be able to reach their audience where they are, whether that is on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. With a private Facebook group, members can share ideas with each other and promote each other's programs. By uploading their videos to the ever-growing platform YouTube, they can share their programs with people who don't have cable at home. And for producers who want to reach their audience in real time, CCMC offers live streaming capabilities for in-studio and field productions. You can engage with your live audience using the comments section and measure your viewership during and after the event. With the latest tools and technology, CCMC's social media and live streaming opportunities will help expand your reach and share your message with a wide captive audience and it's all available with a CCMC membership. Stop by the Media Center on the Downtown Mall in York Place to sign up for a membership today. Thank you, thank you for tuning in to our open house for the Charlottesville Community Media Center and thank you for all our guests who have joined us thus far to share about their programs, present and past, because we have had some who've been part of us for years who decided to come back and be part of this exciting day today. And many of you may recognize my next guest, Ms. Robin Hoffman. Uh, she's very active in our community, very active on social media, and she does, you still do caricatures? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, still yes. do the caricatures. All right, but Robin has been a producer of A Day in the Life? Nope, A, a Day, day in, in a Minute. By the way, Andrea, that was like very funny, um, how that happened. Okay. So I came to the second day of orientation, by the way, you guys out there, you can be a producer. Um, we give you now. We give you like. The tell hand. us about. Tell us about your oh, program show? first. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so I came in an orientation the second day, and and that was a snafu on my part. But anyway, I didn't know that I was supposed to make a show for <laughs> my training and my certificate. Mm -hmm. So then Cal turned to me on the last day and said, "What's your show?" And I said, "A day, a minute with ro artist Robin Hoffman." <laughs> And that stuck because the videographers who were also doing the certification saw my show and they said, you, you, you're good. And I said, really? And I didn't, I wanted to raise awareness. And so I continued to do the show for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And now we have a different show because we have a different studio. So my show is still a day a minute with artist Robin Hoffman. And it highlights entrepreneurs, it ha highlights some community events, but I usually tie it in with my actual painting in 20 minutes or mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. I do a whole painting. So all you Bob Ross fans come tune in because this is different. <laughs> this is the real deal. You'll get to see me do your favorite place like Pompeii or what's your favorite place? Oh, let's see, Italy, Italy. Rome. We, Rome. You could have your interview with me in Italy now with this new studio. And by the way, so the idea for this uh, Charlottesville Public Access TV or Charlottesville Communication Media Center is that you too can, uh, you can send in by your phone 
um, now. Uh, the technology is such. Um, but there are certain rules and regulations just so that the um, program can get fit in with everybody else's program. But I've, so that's why I brought yeah. these papers today. That's what they'll learn all about yes. that when they come to take the producer's workshop. And Robin, another uh, big time producer, uh, big time, yeah, big time producer, big time supporter of CPA TV. You've gone before city council about CPA yes, TV before, haven't I, you? I think free speech, let me, let me being able to, you. oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> free speech, being able to express yourself and to make friends in your neighborhood. Like, who are you? You know, sometimes you have a story to tell. And in 28 minutes, it's amazing. The process enables you to actually work out your ideas. So why did you go before city council? Because I feel like the city needs to have some kind of gathering place uh, with their ideas and stories. And I think CPA TV or Charlottesville Communication um, Media Center is that venue. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, if everybody gets on here and they say whatever they want every week or two weeks or whatever it is, we're all going to hear everybody's story. It's one central place. So the city council um, should know that this is the um, brainchild of, you know, the people have been doing this for 50 years, but certainly Cal Tate, Andy over here mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, she had six shows. You had six shows at one time, sometime, something Probably. like that? <laughs> and all of them. Trying to be Oprah. Yes. <laughs> no, and this is our Oprah. This is our Oprah because um, Oprah brought the same kind of uh, social uh, ideas. Uh, and and right. so Andy's shows were all about that. I, I help with the camera sometimes. And Dave has supported your show a long time. And right? David yeah. Dillahunt, oh my God, is a genius. And so <laughs> Cal Tate also has been doing this for ever and so we have really experienced people who know what to do and can help mm -hmm. us yeah and thank you robin and robin was out there at the at the black business expo last week right yes. getting getting names she Sign truly is a supporter of of Sign up. <laughs> cpa tv and the charlottesville community media center and again we we invite you to come down this is a great place to share your ideas, express your thoughts, and that's what, that's what the, our local public access, access is about. Robin, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. All right, go get us some more members there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Nancy. All right, I'm going to turn it over to our co-host, uh, Raul Thomas, who's going to introduce our next guest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, we're going to be bringing our next guest, Wanda Carter, or her names go without saying, so um, welcome, Wanda Carter. All right, Wanda, she has a show. She's the host of Let It Be Real, and I'm going to let her take it away and say exactly what she needs to say. Well, thank God for everything. I just love this uh, television program that we put on. I've been doing it for about 15 years, and like he said, the name of my show is Let It Be Real. Whatever you do, be for real. It mostly is a gospel show. I go around looking for good gospel choirs, and all of them are good because they sing from the heart, and that's what I like. But you know, God has a lot of talented people out here in his world. And on behalf of Let It Be Real, I do want to thank Calvin Tate, Andre Copeland, and Raul Thomas, David, for all their hard work. So we are looking for a real good year. I'm excited about this new place down here. You all have a blessed day and a great day tomorrow at church. Thank you so much. All right, is that all we need to say, Wanda? If you want to say anything else, or you think you said it all? <laughs> <laughs> and my show airs every Saturday evening at 6 p.m., sometime on Tuesday at 12 noon, so this turn to channel 13, and I hope you all will see me. Let it be real. May God bless you. I love you, and God loves you too. Thank you very much. Wanda Carter. I wouldn't worry with a girl like that. I wouldn't worry, nah, -uh. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry with a girl like that. I wouldn't worry, nah, -uh. I wouldn't worry. She 
takes your hand. She's ready, she's ready, she's ready to roll. She's ready for it. She's ready. She's ready. She's ready, ready, ready to roll. She's ready for it. She's ready. She's electric when she starts to glow. She can charge a room. It makes you crazy, but she It's been excellent. It's been excellent. <laughs> it's been great. All right. So um, we, uh, again, just want to, to share with you more information about the Charlottesville Community Media Center, cvillemedia.org. You can learn all about the center, how to become a producer, what the dues are, and we want you to be involved. This space, it, we, we've gone through a lot and come a long way to be in this space, and this man right here helped to make it so. So, Raul Thomas, again, we thank you. You're for more that, than welcome. Well, thank more you than for welcome. that, and you can tune in on Tuesdays. So I'm going to bring up our next guest because the the time is moving by quickly, and um, we want to make sure our final guests have plenty of time to speak. All right, Akan Mu Matthew, Mister, yeah, come on up, come on up, yeah. He's with Deeper Life Bible Church. Give him that microphone there. Come on, stand between us here. Yeah. How were you? Were you surprised? Yes, I'm yeah, surprised. Yeah, he was like, he's like, wait, that's my name. All yeah. right, okay. All right, you're with Deeper Life Bible uh, Church. Yes, by the grace of the Lord, I just want to thank uh, God for this station. It was a surprise how I want to be a, a little bit emotional, but this is how oh, the right. TV has done for us. Initially, the, our, we, our church was not much. And the regional officer over our regional officer was thinking of eradicating the church, close it. But somebody just went to him. They are using CPA TV, and as far as far they are using CPA TV, forty thousand people are watching this TV. Even mm -hmm. in your headquarter in Washington DC, yes. you don't have up to forty thousand people. So if forty people that's I mean forty thousand people are watching them. And you have few people in your Washington DC, compare it. Why do you want to close it? And our our regional officer was amazed with that one. 
That's how the church is existing to today. Not only that one, since then we have so increased. And I share a testimony the last time we came. Somebody was watching us at watching us at another city. Uh, my watching accent, you in another city. Yes, okay. on this TV. Mm -hmm. And then he met me. She met me in Kimat. Then Kimat was still assisting. Then he said, she said, I know you. I said, I don't know you, ma. She said, but I've been watching you in CPA TV. I, I, I said, oh, I have a program, Deeper Life Bible Church. <laughs> he said, OK, I would like to come and see you. Then I said, OK, that's OK with me. Then he just, she just called me about a, about a month later. She, she told me that I wanted to come and see you, Pastor. I said, I'm always busy because of the church, but you can come before Bible study. By the time she came, he brought uh, that miracle in my life. When you are talking about miracle, he brought a car, and then from the front seat to the back was full of clothes. Oh. When you are talking about more than 12 suits, more than 20 jackets, so more than 60 donated shirts. donated a lot of clothes. He just he said, Pastor, I just want to give you this. Oh, wow. And that has been a miracle in my life. Wow. There are many, we showed this to in Nigeria. We showed it for them. <laughs> Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. So that, uh, the, 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 the advantage is just too numerous. I can't okay. count them. And you're the pastor of Deep, Deeper Life Bible, Bible Church? Church. Okay. Okay. Mr. Matthew, did I say your first name correctly? Akanmo? Yes, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. No, no, I want to make sure I say it right. <laughs> okay. It's like, it's okay. In other words, no, you didn't say it right. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. But um, where can we get more information about your church, Deeper Life you can Bible Church? Check it anywhere. Because of the program, we are very popular on Google. Just type Deeper Life Bible Church of Charlotte. Okay. Do you have a Facebook page? Uh, Facebook, Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, Deeper uh, Life. Uh, free time, yeah. And where are you located? We, we are using Lugo Academy for Sunday services. Then we are using Briarwood for Bible study every Monday. Okay, uh, all right. That's Deeper Life Bible, Bible Church. Church. And if you notice, you, when the preachers get the mic, they <laughs> are ready to go. Cal <laughs> is back in the corner. <laughs> wrap it up, wrap it up. Oh, Mr. Matthew, thank you so much. Thank and we, you very we much. Wish I your... appreciate you, Mr. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we wish your church much success. <laughs> I'm excited about the launch of the Charlottesville Community Media Center. This brings together a wealth of resources on our staff, in the community, all coming together to take advantage of a state-of-the-art studio on the Charlottesville Downtown Mall. This is more than just a refresh of public access TV. It's definitely going to be that. But it's part of a series of upgrades to the city's strategic communications platforms. Over the past year, we've upgraded all the equipment in the Charlottesville City Council Chambers. That allows us to broadcast a live stream at a much higher quality. It also means that we have uh, remote broadcast capabilities that we didn't have before. I'm looking forward to our staff taking advantage of the studio and doing uh, educational messages, uh, doing public service announcements. Again, all to engage our community more effectively. I'm also looking forward to what the community comes up with. Uh, we, we hope to have lots of producers in the community with new ideas for TV shows and uh, content that they would like to have on the internet and also on public access TV. We couldn't do this without the support of Comcast and its subscribers. And so to them we say thank you for all the support over these years. Those resources have helped fund a lot of the upgrades the community is going to get to take advantage of. We also couldn't have done this without Ryle Thomas. Uh, Ryle inspired us to find a new place to have our studio and to make it state of the art and we couldn't do it without his underwriting and partnership. Uh, so we also want to make sure we thank Ryle Thomas. So we invite you to join us at the Charlottesville Community Media Center. You can learn more on our website at seavillemedia.org or you can call us at 977-0713. Thank you. We welcome you back to the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. We're located down here at the shops at York Place, um, and we thank you for tuning in. We thank our guests for coming by, 
to see this, our beautiful new space. And again, we want you to utilize this space. This space is for you, our community. CVMedia.org for more information. We're going to get another selection from uh, Miss, Miss Hayden here, Joyce Hayden, and one more selection from her. And then after her, we're going to hear from another one of our longtime producers who's now going on just to pay him tribute. Ms. Hayden. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to thank you um, for this opportunity. Thank Mr. Tate. We thank you, Mr. Tate, for the opportunity. And before I sing, I just want to invite everyone to um, the information on our church. We are at Holy Church of Christ, 3922 Buckner Road, Bumpus, Virginia. And we have service on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. We are on the TV station. We air at 11 o'clock on Sunday nights, and we welcome you. And if you need to reach us, we are at 804-338-4925 or 338-4926. I know sometimes we worry Mr. Tate, but we thank him again for his kindness and help with us, to us. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you so much, Ms. Hayden. All right, and we are slowly coming to a close. It's been an exciting day here at CCMC, and we have another soloist who is coming aboard to uh, grace us with her music, Miss Lily Garay, or Garay. <laughs> All right, so tell us what you're going to sing. I'm going to sing this song called Your Love. Your love. Yeah. You wrote that? I wrote it um, last year, last spring, in a time where I was getting really frustrated with music and I didn't hear any songs that represented my beliefs and what I loved about life. Um, so one day in one of my professor's offices, I just sat down and I invited a couple of friends in and I was like, hey, let's just start writing down things that we, we, we believe about God and creation mm -hmm. and about ourselves. Um, and then I ended up putting the song out completely out of frustration, and it ended up blowing up. Spotify picked it up um, as part of their New Music Friday, which is a huge deal. Um, and so it's been really, really cool to get to live off of that, um, okay. the birth of something that came out of frustration, but right. has been really beautiful. Yeah. Lots of good things come out of frustration. Yeah. Right, right if we channel <laughs> we it do. properly. I did want right. to say real quick um, yeah. that I do live in Charlottesville. I travel all over and available for that, um, but also available for business events, cookouts, parties, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, access my contact info on my website. Okay, all right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lily Garay. Thank you. Here. Keep 
my gaze like a hurricane If I know one thing it's that I got your love If I know one thing it's that I got your love This love's the thing no one can take away I know you're here to stay You keep my gaze like a hurricane If I know one thing it's that I got your love If I know one thing it's that I got your love I got your love Got your love, got your love I've got your love, got your love, got your love You move heaven and earth Just to keep me close Just to keep me close If I know one thing it's that I got your love If I know one thing it's that I got your love Oh, I got your love, got your love, got your love I got your love Got your love, got your love. Thank you. Lily Gray, Lily Gray. So we're going to next show a tribute to one another longtime producer. You remember Mr. Winston Churchill? Very well, very yeah. well. Yes. Yeah, no, yes. you remember him? Yeah, yeah. he. Um, Passed away a few years ago, and uh, again, he was faithful in producing his shows, I think every, every month, every two weeks or something, and so Dave put together, um, is going to show uh, one of his clips just to, just to honor one of our own former producers. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. Without God, I could do nothing. Without Him... I would fail without him my life would be rugged like a ship without a sail without a doubt he is my savior my strength along life's way in deep water he is my anchor through faith he'll be my stay without god i can do nothing without him i would fail without him my life would be rugged like a ship Without a sail, I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. I am trusting and I know He cares. I am waiting, just waiting for my Savior. I know He'll dry all my tears. Without God, I could do nothing without him I would fail without him my life would be rugged like a ship without a sail my soul is anchored in Jesus through storms and billows may roll Satan had so many temptations, cause the cat 
Lifter of my soul, without God I could do nothing. Without Him I would fail. Without Him my life would be rugged, like a ship without a sail. Without God. I could do nothing without him I would fail without him my life would be rugged like a ship without a sail without God I can do nothing that's truly the answer in this life without God you can't do nothing because God is our Savior. As a facilities manager, my biggest challenge was to train people how to use the equipment from the cameras, the microphones, the soundboard, the lights, the uh, setting up uh, a stage, all those uh, elements of the production uh, was very important to make a successful program. And uh, I was very happy to have such a group of people who were very interested in doing the best job that they could with their production. Uh, Shawsville Public Access has been around for uh, about four decades. Uh, we started uh, in a, a small facility located on West Main Street. And then uh, from there, we moved into a, uh, a place uh, at KTEC and we saw all kinds of programs. Uh, we uh, had cooking shows, we had a uh, auto mechanic show, uh, 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 groups, uh, musical groups would come in to perform concerts. Uh, it was a really busy time for us. And I would say that uh, from that uh, juncture in our history, we became uh, uh, noticed and so far, that notoriety has carried us into our new facility, which is located uh, in your place. It's a gorgeous facility, and uh, we have uh, cutting edge technology, cameras and audio and lights and all kinds of things. So if you're interested in doing programs uh, uh, and communicate to your community, you know, your, your friends, your relatives, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your coworkers, Please come down and use our facilities and let people know that you have a voice. And remember, this is your voice in your community. Welcome back to the Charlottesville Community Media Center Open House. I am Andrea Copeland Whitsett here with my co host who just walked off the stage. He's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's had enough. It's live, I'm done. It's live TV, All right. man. <laughs> All right, Ryle Thomas, who has a show here on CPA TV, uh, the Ryle Thomas Show. He's a longtime producer of CPA TV, and we've done work in the past. So it's just great to be back here working together. Uh, co-hosting our open house for this beautiful new space down here at the shops at York Place. So we, our um, next guest is Mr. Michael Payne. Mr. Michael Payne. He's uh, currently running for city council. All right, tell us, uh, Michael, why'd you decide to run and what, are you, what platform are you running on? Yeah, so you know, I've been um, going to city council meetings for a while and been involved and um, decided to step up and run, um, particularly on the issue of affordable housing. I've worked with Habitat and working in advocacy on that issue, just seeing how badly you know the city needs to take action on affordable housing and widening inequality, and just hoping I could play at least a small role in helping the city to take action on those issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is um, affordable housing near and dear to you? Yeah, you know, it's where it's where I've worked with Habitat, you know, working directly with a lot of families and seeing the impact that having access to affordable housing can make in a family's life. Um, you know, I myself, you know, I make a little bit more than minimum wage and, you know, see in the city how hard it is to be able to afford to live here. And I think Charlottesville is just has an incredible community and incredible history. And I would hate to see that go away because the city becomes so unaffordable that people are forced to move to surrounding counties. Well, Mike, we've been um, talking about this issue for many, many, many years. Why do you think you can make a change? 
Well, it won't just be just me. It will be the community coming together to create change together. It's never about one person. But I think we are at a good moment. The city made a historic investment in affordable housing this year, this past budget cycle. I think we're seeing something really exciting happen with the redevelopment of public housing process. Um, the city's getting ready to finish its affordable housing strategy. We're looking at really creative policies like community land trusts. And I think the city, there's a level of awareness and desire for change that I think is going to open up exciting opportunities for the community to do something. Okay, all right. All right, no, we don't have that much time, so we just kind of okay. wind it up and everything. Yeah, well, I'll just say, actually, but when I was in high school, I took mm -hmm. uh, a class at uh, K-Tech on public access TV, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think with, wow. with, with, with Mr. Cal, Cal Tate. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, you know, the public access, it's, it's our airways. Uh, we own it, and that's such an incredible resource and incredible opportunity for us to be able to tell our story. So it's really yeah. it's just cool to see this new space and be here. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank being you here to much. support it. Thank, thank you, you for very being much. here to support it, Michael. All right, we'll go out that way. We're getting ready to do a, an old gospel song. We're real glad everybody came out today. And, and again, I'd like to introduce Wendy Collier, Brandon Collier, and my name's Wayne Wright. And this is the song, I'll Fly Away. very much. That is Mr. Wayne Wright. Um, so thank you for showing that, Dave. 
Our next guest we have is Katrina Scott. Katrina is a Turner. I'm sorry, honey. I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry. Thank you for correcting sorry. me. Katrina Turner. Um, she is a community activist and has some, you know, exciting things to, to share with us. I wanted to know why she was here. So share with us why you came down to the open house today. Um, well, I'm one of the initial members of the Civilian Review Board, and we've actually passed in our bylaws and hoping City Council will pass these bylaws that we created um, mm -hmm. for this board. Um, we've heard a lot that there's not too many complaints out here about what's going on with the police in our community, but we've told them that they people don't think that there's anything going to be done if they go to the police department and file a complaint, you know, because nothing has been done for years. So I want to go out there and start interviewing people to see what their concerns are in this city and see that if there's any complaints that they have to let them know that they can go and file complaints. Mm -hmm. If we are out here being treated, not being treated respectfully by the police or whoever, we need to let it be known. Okay. If we don't file a complaint, they will not know what's going on in our community. So do you think the show you're interested in starting with public access will be able to strengthen the relationship between the police department and the community? Will, it, will you be able to use it that also as um, a way to do that, even if they have complaints, it could strengthen it? I'm just or hoping that those relationships yes, rather. if mm -hmm. it can improve it, I'm just, I just want them to know that there is a way. Mm -hmm. If they're not being treated properly, there is a way that they can go file a complaint to try to do something about it. Okay, yes, so, um, and just make sure you get some information on the on the show again this is why our our public access television station is here we yes, want to hear from the voices of the community so katrina turner thank you so much for yes, being on, thank you. on the program thank you. all right thank we're going to give you another tour of uh our new station here where we're located okay we are located at the shops at your place the beautiful shops at your place um you can this is the interest coming from the downtown mall as you can see the different shops are, are, are to the right and the left as we go down the hall. And look at that lovely facade of Whoa. the Charlottesville Community Media Center. I tell you, it's just exciting to see it get to, this, uh, get to this location. And now we are, this is our entrance from Water Street. So there is a dual entrance to get to CCMC. Um, Yep, these are the shops again coming up from the Water Street side. Whoa. And there's parking in the Water Street garage, parking in the Market Street garage. Um, again, you're walking through clean halls, um, nice buildings. We appreciate the management at York Place keeping this facility looking nicely. And again, we're just at a great space down here at the shops at York Place off the downtown mall, off Water Street. Come on down learn more about CCMC start a program you just heard from Katrina Turner who has an idea for a program to um, to you know share information with our local police department she's part of the C civilian review board all right um, again this station this place is for you I'm Andrea Copeland Whitset here with Ryle Thomas and look who we have betwixt <laughs> 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 Calvin Lewis Tate. Is that your middle name? Still. Still. Okay. All right. Calvin Lewis Tate. If you've been part of CPA TV, you came on when we were at um, what location? Oh, 1000 East Rail Road. So that's when you came on. Okay. Right. So we were at K-Tech for a long time, and then we moved to Forest Street. Oh, man. Then JPA. Yeah, we were all over the place. And now here. And yeah. now here. All right. So yeah. Cal. So I just want to briefly, quickly say that thank you everyone for, for coming out for our uh, open house mm -hmm. uh, at our new facility. Uh, we waited a long time for something like this. It's, it's always been my dream, even uh, mm -hmm. when Raul and I were just uh, sitting down for the first time and, and throwing paper clips at each other. <laughs> uh, I would say, well, one of these days we're going to be out of here in downtown, and here we are. So thanks 
so much for all your support, all right. and I love you. Love you. Aww. Yeah, well. And Andrea, she's been along. David, so the, the, the core is here. We're still strong and kicking. If you have programs uh, that you want to do uh, and you're itching to do it, here's your opportunity. Don't, don't go to the big broadcasters here in town because they'll, uh, all they want to see is your paycheck. You don't have to do that here. You just uh, approach us, call the center. If you see me or David on the street, just uh, uh, let us know that you're interested and we'll get the ball rolling. We're going to start training classes very soon. So uh, be ready uh, to um, uh, look out for those training classes. Come on board and be a part of our wonderful, fun, loving family. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you for doing such a fabulous job. Thank you, thank you for doing such a fabulous job. Yeah. And we love you. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you all. Cbellmedia.org. <laughs>